Hello everyone and welcome to another animal presentation combined with habitat building in Planet Zoo. In today's video we'll talk about a toy bear. No, the bear is not a toy in any form, but this bear is a famous gamer. The giant panda belongs to the bear family. Its scientific name is Ailuropoda melanoleuca, its original systematic name is Ursus melanoleuca, which means black and white bear, but it is also called bamboo bear. It is the nominal species of this genus and also the only extant non-fossil species, and has been referred to as a living fossil. At the same time, the giant panda is the rarest bear species on Earth. The species was first described in 1869 by a French missionary, Per Armand Davy, who gave it the name Ursus Melanoleucus. The name is a combination of the ancient Greek words melano, meaning black, and leucus, meaning white. We can know the words well, as it is the origin of the melanistic and leucistic words. In 1870, after analyzing bones of the giant panda, Alphonse Milne Edwards found that the species was closer to the red panda, whose name is Ailurus fulgus, and therefore renamed the giant panda to Ailuropoda melanoleuca. The name panda originally referred to the red panda, and although it is said that the word panda was borrowed to English from French, no conclusive explanation can be found in French for it. And other theories say that it may derive from the Nepali name Niga Japanja, meaning bamboo eater. Zoologists did not recognize the giant panda until later on, and since they considered the two species to be related, they distinguished them with the names giant panda and lesser panda. The red panda is actually still called lesser panda in current times. The most common name in Chinese used today is Da Xiong Mao, which means giant bear cat. The epithet giant, which is Da in Chinese, was given to distinguish it from the lesser panda, which has the name in Chinese of Xiao Xiong Mao, which means little bear cat. They probably got the name bear cat because their pupils are slit shaped, like a cat's, and they are excellent at climbing trees. Based on skull measurements, fur samples and genetic tests, science currently recognizes two subspecies. One is the nominal subspecies, the Melanoleuca, and it is mainly found in Sichuan province and is easily recognized by its sharply contrasting black and white fur. The other is the Qingling Panda, which is native only to the parts of the Qingling Mountains belonging to Shanxi province and is found at an altitude between 1300 and 3000 meters. Its fur is not black and white, but brown and white. It has a smaller skull and its molars are larger compared to the nominal subspecies. Four other extinct fossil species are members of the Ailuropoda genus. Ailuropoda microta lived in the late Pliocene. The Ailuropoda vuliganensis lived in the late Pliocene, early Pleistocene age. The Ailuropoda beconi and the Ailuropoda minor lived in the Pleistocene. Giant pandas eat mainly plants, but not only bamboo, although that is their main food and they like the younger shoots, the older ones are eaten only when there is none better, as they are chewier. They eat a lot of it, like 10-20 kilos of bamboo, as it is not very nutritious and their digestion is not fully adapted to a plant-only diet. A giant panda can eat half of its own weight in bamboo in a single day. Although 98% of their food is still bamboo, in the wild occasionally they eat other grasses, wild tubers or even meat, in the form of birds, rodents or carrion. In captivity, they may receive honey, eggs, fish, yams, shrub leaves, oranges or bananas, along with specially prepared food. Pandas are born with sterile intestines and require bacteria obtained from their mother's feces to digest vegetation. 
The length of a giant panda is between 150 and 190 cm. Its tail is short, 10-15 cm, and the weight of an adult individual is between 70 and 125 kg. Its fur is rich, its base color is white, its front and hind legs are black. This blackness continues on its back and forms a belt that encircles its upper body. In addition, its ears, the area around its eyes, and sometimes the end of its tail are also black. No one knows why its coloring is so interesting. Maybe it's to scare the enemy, or it's for camouflage, or even for thermal control. It has a big head among bears, and like most bears, the giant panda has 42 teeth. Its rear molars are larger than those of other bears, because they are used to green bamboo fiber. Another characteristic is that they have an elongated carpal bone on their front paws, which is like a thumb, so they practically have six fingers on their front legs. This finger is used to hold the bamboo when feeding. They can sit in one place for up to 10-12 hours a day. Actually, this is the peculiarity of the home office. It is primarily a ground-dwelling animal, but it is an excellent climber and swimmer. It can stand on two legs, but it's tiring, so it quickly switches to rest mode. If it can, it eats sitting down so that it can grab the food with its front paws. During the day, it mostly sleeps in caves, tree hollows or rock crevices, and at dusk it engages in a bloodthirsty hunt for the necessary bamboo. And for this it makes tunnel-like passages, which after hunting take a straight path back to the resting place, to the teddy bear den. The giant panda's habitat is now only in small patches in central and southern China, roughly 5900 square kilometers. This includes the mountainous areas of Sichuan, Gansu and Shanxi provinces. These are densely forested subtropical mountain slopes and pandas can be found here at an altitude between 2700 and 4000 meters in summer and they descend to approximately 800 meters above sea level in winter time. These places tend to have cool wet summers and cold winters. For this reason, giant pandas do not hibernate in winter. Like other bears, they usually live alone in an area of a few square kilometers. Females drive away all other females from the central part of their territory, which is a part around 40 hectares, from the full of uh, 4 6 square kilometers. They do not allow any other female into their own kitchen. They mark their territory with urine, rubbing or scratching trees. Males are flexible, do not defend their territory and often have parts in common with other males, although they prefer to stay out of each other's way. The breeding season is between March and May. In such cases social activity is revived, they look for mates and the males even fight with each other. As also in the case of other bears, the fertilized egg remains in the mother's uterus for 45 to 120 days before implanting on the uterine wall. Baby pandas are usually born in August or September, one or two, rarely three. They are small in size and weight only between 90 and 130 grams, even with their silky white fur. As babies, they have a huge tail compared to their size, roughly a third of their body. They are so tiny that among advanced mammals, they hold the record for the weight ratio between mother and newborn cub. If several cubs are born, the mother, on the basis of unknown conditions, chooses one as her favorite and rejects the others. At the age of one month, the baby already looks like a giant panda, black and white, though it opens its eyes only at the age of 40-60 days, and it starts eating solid food only after 5-6 months. 
complete winning occurs at 8 to 9 months of age and at 18 months they're separate from their mother and then they become sexually mature sometime between 5 and 7 years of age. In the wild the life expectancy of giant pandas is around 25 years. The original range of the giant pandas included much of eastern China and Myanmar. Its decline is attributed to the late Pleistocene age and human expansion and climate change played a role in it. They were hunted for their fur and later their introduction into zoos also caused some displacement and also decimated them. In China it was placed under protection in 1939 and since then its hunting and fur trading have been severely punished. Until 1997 it was punished by death. Since 1998 their distribution area has also been under protection. According to a four-year research by the Worldwide Fund for Nature and the Chinese government, in 2004 there were approximately 1600 specimens living in the wild. In 2006, however, the population was estimated to be almost double that, at 3000 individuals. While there were only 13 giant panda reserves in China in the 1980s, by 2006 there were already 40 of them. The giant panda is included in Appendix 1 of Sites and in 2016, thanks to the successes of recent years, the IUCN moved it from the endangered category to the vulnerable category. At that time the population was estimated at almost 1900 adults and above 2000 cubs. Unfortunately, since the extent of bamboo forests is expected to decrease, it can be assumed that the number of giant pandas will decrease again. At the end of 2006, a total of 221 captive specimens were reported in China and in other zoos around the world approximately 50 specimens lived. There are giant pandas in 10 zoos in Europe, the closest to Hungary is in the Schönbrunn Zoo in Vienna. I am not sure how exact this information is currently as many of the pandas loan contracts have expired and for example most of the pandas from the USA have been returned to China and the last four will be returned in 2024. All giant pandas found outside of China are owned by the Chinese state and under a 1984 law they are only loaned to zoos for a maximum of 10 years for 1 million dollars a year. According to the contract, any cops of the loaned giant pandas will automatically become the property of the Chinese state. Between 1958 and 1982, China already gave away 23 giant pandas to other countries for diplomatic purposes, as it recognized the diplomatic power of gifting giant pandas even before the 1984 law was enacted. An example of this when Mao Zedong gave a pair of pandas to the Washington Zoo in 1972 after Richard Nixon's visit to China. Nixon reciprocated this by gifting to muskox. You can read more about this under the concept of panda diplomacy. They rarely succeed with breeding in captivity. 2006 was the first year when it was possible to release a giant panda born in captivity back into the wild, for which the animal was prepared for three years. There are panda rescue centers in China in which breeding programs are carried out in order to save them. The Wolong Nature Conservation Research Center is a place where experts deal with the breeding of pandas and a TV program was made about it on Animal Planet named Pandemonium. The giant panda has become known worldwide as the symbol of the Worldwide Fund for Nature and often as a symbol of animal protection in general. The main threat to them are humans as they are destroying large areas of the forests. 
There is another problem related to reproduction, as panda colonies are far from each other, so during the short mating season the pandas simply do not find each other in time. Another difficulty is that they are difficult to reproduce in the first place, and since if the mother happens to have several cubs, it only keeps one, meaning many baby pandas die before reaching adulthood. Remember, you can help me and the pandas by sharing the video with others, by pressing the like button, and if you are not already subscribed, please do so and turn on the notifications to know when a new video is released. You can also help me by joining my community, and for that you can even get rewards. And of course I'm always happy when you write a comment. It's also a positive feedback for me. Don't forget, you can also influence the order of the animal presentations with voting for your choice when I create a new poll in the community section of my channel. So we reached the end of the video and you can already see the little panda born in our zoo. I was Nightbird from Hanzu Tongwan Cheng and thank you for watching. Have an awesome day! By the way, you can find this habitat blueprint in the Steam Workshop.